welcome to Close to Creation. My name is Caitlin Esper, and this channel is all about exploring God's word and his beautiful creation, this beautiful world. And I am so excited to be coming to you today on Earth Day to talk about something that's really important to me. And I've grown up outdoors all my life. I've <laughs> From a young age, I was running around barefoot in my neighborhood, climbing trees, just being out in nature. I absolutely loved it. But just a couple of years ago, I realized the importance of taking care of the earth. And so that's what we're going to talk about today is why is it important and why should we as Christians care about the earth? Because I know that Earth Day, it's a big celebration all around the world, um, which is just celebrating the earth. It's celebrating how beautiful it is and how amazing it is and advocating for its protection. But it's definitely not something on our calendar. Like it's not like Christmas. It's not like Easter. It's not something that we celebrate in our Christian faith. And so why should we care about it? Why should we care about celebrating the earth or protecting it? I wanna tell you three reasons why it's important because over the past couple of years through studying through Genesis and studying through scripture, I've realized that it actually is very important to God. And so the first reason why we should take care of the earth as Christians comes right <laughs> from the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's Genesis 1, 1. That is literally the opening line to the Bible. I cannot think of a more mic drop moment than that opening line. And that tells us that God created this world. God created the earth. And through Genesis 1, we get the entire account of how God created the world. That he just spoke simple sentences, let there be light, and there was light. And that happened with all of creation. And then all the way down to mankind when he created us on the sixth day. And so at the end of all he's creating, he looks at it and he says, this is very good. And now I want you to think of a potter. If someone who is making pottery and they make the most intricate vase, okay, it's so detailed, so outlined, it's so specific and, and just so intricate and they look at it and they think, wow, this is like the best piece of work I've ever made. Like this is very good. Do you think that the potter is just going to put it on the floor so it can get kicked around easily? Or do you think that the potter is just not really gonna care what happens to it? Probably not. <laughs> They're going to take extra precautions to make sure that, that they take care of it. Like they may put it up on the highest shelf, they may clean it, they may make sure that it remains the beautiful design that it was. And I think that that's the same with God's creation, that God created it and he said it was very good and so, that means it's important. And now moving on to the second reason is that, okay, God created it. That is like in and of itself, the best reason to take care of this beautiful planet because our creator created it. But the second reason is that God actually commissioned us to take care of the earth. And so I want to read to you in Genesis 1, verses 27 through 28, and it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. So when I hear the word rule over, like my mind immediately goes to like a king or a queen ruling over a kingdom. And when you think about a king or a queen, you would think that they want to take care of their kingdom. You want their kingdom or they would want their kingdom to prosper. And so when God commissions mankind to rule over the fish of the sea, the birds in the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground and other translation just says that everything in it. So everything in the earth. And when God commissions us to rule over it, I mean, that gives us a lot of authority. That gives us a lot of responsibility to take care of it, to help it prosper. And you know, even just like thinking about when it says rule over the fish of the sea, well, right now our oceans are really struggling. Like if we take a look at how many um, 
fish die each year from consuming plastic or pollution or all the things like we're not stewarding over well we're not stewarding well what God has given us. And so if we want to be good rulers, if we want to rule well, then we have to take daily steps to make sure that we take care of what's around us. We take care of what God has provided us. And just like a ruler, they can't make all these changes in one day. Like that's not possible, but by daily steps, by daily choices, by the decisions that they make every single day, it's going to affect the kingdom. And the same goes with us. And another thing the Bible commissions us to do is to love others well. And I can't think of a better way to love others well than to take care of this planet. Because that leads me to my third reason, that when we take care of this planet, it will take care of us. And so there's an article from Geneva, Geneva.org that I really want to read to you because I think that it kind of sums this up perfectly. And it says, some may argue that humans are more important than the rest of creation, so we should focus our efforts on meeting the needs of people rather than addressing environmental issues. However, many of our environmental problems negatively affect people. If we fail to care for the environment, God's people will suffer as a result of it. And we are seeing this all over the world today. I mean, even just recently, like the drought in Somalia, and maybe that's not directly because of you know plastic or just any specific thing or any daily choice that we make but it's a culmination over time we really need to open our eyes to see that there are people struggling in this world like there are people being relocated from their homes like from their island homes and i'm not saying like vacation like rentals those kinds of things like no like generations of indigenous people are being relocated from their homes like i don't know if you watched down to earth uh with zach efron but the second season is so good and it talks about this that um some indigenous people are being moved from their homes that they have been there for so long. <laughs> I don't want to say like thousands of years because I don't exactly remember how long, but they've just lived there so long and and that's all they know. But since sea levels are rising, they're being caused to relocate. And you may be like, okay, like they have to move, whatever. But you also look at just all the natural, the natural disasters that are happening today and the environment and that, you know, something's wrong, something's off and how many people are dying because of these things. And so what's happening in the world today is directly affecting people here on earth and every single person on this earth, God cares about, God loves. And like Jesus came for every single person on this earth. And so if just doing our part in trying to make daily changes, small daily changes that could help this planet, if that means that we can love other people well and take care of people that we may never meet in our life, probably won't because there's 8 billion people on this planet, then that's reason in enough. So the Geneva article continues on to say that we are not to neglect the task of sharing the good news of Christ's redeeming work in our lives, but neither should we neglect the work of tending the garden. Caring for God's creation is part of our service to God and an integral part of our role as servant leaders in God's kingdom. So a couple of things there, when it says tending the garden, like that inspires me because you think of a gardener, like they work so hard to have a small harvest. Like I'm just thinking of someone who's a homesteader, like just having their own little garden and they eat from the garden. And if they don't take care of the garden, if they don't tend the garden, then they're not going to get a harvest. They're not going to have food to eat. And so tending the garden means daily, looking after it, taking care of it. Maybe that means watering it. Maybe that means um, pruning it, like whatever it is, taking care of it is going to be an important part of actually getting a harvest. And then the second thing that stood out to me from that little excerpt that I read is the, um, that this is an integral part of our role as servant leader, leaders in God's kingdom. And I don't know about you, but I want to be a good servant. Like I want to serve God well. And thankfully that it is not by works that I am saved, that it is just by faith, that because I believe in Jesus, I am saved, that I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to work to impress God. I don't have to hustle and grind and do all the things to impress him. Like, no, that I am saved because of my faith, but my faith motivates me to try and do better 
to try and be a better Christian, to try and be more like Jesus, to try and care more about people in this world, and to try and care about God's beautiful creation. Because if you just look around, like I'm getting goosebumps right now. If you look around, this world is so incredibly beautiful. And I don't know what your favorite place is. I don't know if you've been able to travel at all, but even just pictures, I mean, and pictures can't even show every, every piece of beauty, but it's, it's just spectacular. And my husband and I, we have the privilege of traveling around full time in an RV and it like seeing different places over the United States alone it has just taken my breath away. And it's not, I mean, like the big spaces are so cool. Like, you know, Yosemite National Park, so cool. Death Valley National Park, so cool. Like there's so many, Sedona, Arizona took my breath away. But there's so many smaller places that don't get as much attention. Like the smaller details that God still cares about. Like all of these trees right here, like this is a beautiful morning right now. And the sun is rising and it's just, it's spectacular. And so this world is just so beautiful. I just went off on a little tangent there because I just love the outdoors. I love nature. I don't know if you can tell because I have a channel called Close to Creation, but but yeah, it's just, I, the whole reason for this channel is that when you get close to creation, I believe that you actually get closer to the creator. And so getting close to creation, that also like protecting creation also is a part of it. And so if you're the person who's like, okay, all of this sounds great, but like, I don't know what to do. Like, are there product swaps I can make? Are there changes I can make? Are there habits I can change? And yes, friend, there definitely is. And so I'm going to be linking below um, a blog post that I wrote about 35 eco-friendly swaps you can make, different habit changes, all the things to help lead you in the right direction. And you know, small changes may seem insignificant, you know, because what really do they matter if I, you know, use a plastic to go cup from Starbucks or not. But over time, the small changes that you make will add up. And so choosing to maybe not get a single use plastic cup, but maybe choosing to take your reusable cup or refillable coffee cup and getting coffee that way. Like just little changes over time will add up. And so I talk about that more in the blog post. So definitely go and check that out. And yeah, I am just so excited. I'm so happy that you you joined me today, that you listened to these reasons. I hope that it encourages you to take care of God's beautiful creation because it is spectacular. It is amazing. And just like I said, like God created it, we're commissioned, you know, to take care of it and that when we take care of this world, it will take care of us. And so go out today, enjoy this beautiful earth day and enjoy and celebrate the earth. And, um, and yeah, even if you're not watching this on earth day, that's totally fine. Still go out and enjoy God's beautiful creation. And so just thank you for joining me. These people are also joining towards the end, but <laughs> I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video.